Hello, my name is Leighton Flowers, the Director of Evangelism for Texas Baptist, and I have a guest with me today. This is Rob Peabody, an old friend of mine. He actually used to uh, teach as a teaching pastor at a church right across the street. I can actually see with a field where the, the church was there at Lake Point, where you used to teach, and an old friend of mine. And uh, I, I learned about some new work that he was doing recently and some back and forth Facebook uh, messages. And I thought, Rob, I need you to come on and tell people about this. So, Rob, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Good to reconnect with you. Uh, I don't know how many years later this is. I know you were off in London for a while doing all kinds of awesome work that I was kind of following through your Facebook stuff. And I, I just love to see what God's doing. And now you're back in the Dallas area. But uh, t tell tell our audience about what you've been working on and a little bit about this app that really is, is I'm, I think, meeting a huge need right now, especially with the COVID virus and all that's going on. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, so the company we started a social enterprise called VOMO, um, stands for Volunteer Movement, it's VOMO.org. And, um, you know, that is a, historically has been a SaaS, you know, software as a service uh, platform where we're mobilizing people to go meet needs in the local community. And so primarily working with churches, with nonprofits, school districts, businesses that want to do give back, um, how do they recruit new volunteers? How do they uh, manage the volunteers they have, get analytics reporting, economic impact, all those types of things. And so uh, we're based in McKinney. I live here in Plano. And um, yeah, so it's a, a tech social platform for good and uh, just work with a lot of churches across the country. But the most recent thing, and I, I guess what got us connected here again, um, is what we're calling the Be a Neighbor campaign. And it's it's beaneighborcampaign.com. And the way that that worked, well, Number one, it's a dramatic pivot and shift from what we historically, uh, our, our business model historically. Uh, we've now made this free and available to any organization, any church, any frontline nonprofit uh, to be able to mobilize people and connect needs in our greatest, in, in this crisis that we're all finding ourselves in. And um, the way this got started was in September of this last year. Um, we did a deal for Sony Pictures for the Tom Hanks film, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. And ah, so, be a neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. And so we we did that and helped people um, really was bringing awareness for the film, but then also helping people to do good and emulate the life and legacy of Fred Rogers in their local community. And um, and so that was great. I thought it was a one time thing. Um, but then when we saw coronavirus uh, coming up, you know, just even well, it was two weeks ago that we we got on a call with some of our board members and decided, you know, we have a solution for such a time as this. How, how what can we do to leverage all of our resources to open this up for free so that anybody can come on um, to be able to find ways that they can go serve in the local community and um, and on nonprofits and churches as well can be posting opportunities because they're aware of what's going on uh, for the crisis and so. That's what uh, what brought us together. We were, I, I think, we were talking on Facebook here last week as, as we were doing a lot of work around the Be a Neighbor campaign. Well, it seems like the, you know some of the, the default is to kind of do nothing, especially during a pandemic. You know, you're, all of the officials are saying stay home, stay home, stay home, um, and and so you don't you feel like you really are kind of stuck. And so maybe talk about that a little bit, Rob. Talk about how how can people help? Because I think a lot of, especially those of us who are stir crazy in our house. Uh, who can't just sit on our hands and do nothing without uh, going crazy. Uh, talk about how you can still get involved, even if you're possibly uh, quarantined in your house, or how can you get involved in other ways that don't put people at risk or yourself at risk? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, I, I did a Facebook live this morning and, and started, there's a lot of tension, exactly what you're saying. We're supposed to stay at home, self-quarantine, uh, be responsible, you know, flatten the curve, all of the language we're seeing. But then at the same time, you've got real, legitimate needs out on the front lines and represented by our nonprofits and our churches that are that are working with the most vulnerable in our communities. And so, you know, which one's right? How do we do it? Um, and so we've been able to work with a lot of nonprofits. I mean, we're seeing um, a new nonprofit every 20 minutes come and register on the platform and get access and start uploading their opportunities to go serve. And, um, you know, I mean, just yesterday we had a, a million hits on the page, um, of people coming in wanting to find help. And so, you know, a couple of ways to answer your question that you can do this is we have virtual opportunities that you can do from the safety and security from your home. Uh, they're remote. Um, oftentimes, you know, you go to beaneighborcampaign.com and scroll halfway down the page and you can see where you can explore opportunities on there. 
Um, you can just sign up there, yeah, as you can see on the screen as a volunteer. But if you scroll a little further down, um, you can even click right there, explore current opportunities. And, uh, and there are campaigns in there of ways that people can do this from their house. And so we've got, you know, one of my neighbors is an 80 year old woman who's like, I just want to be a part. I've got so much time. What can I do? And so she's actually coordinating four nonprofits um, uh, projects for them. And she's jumping online. She's uploading different opportunities. Um, and there's, you know, there's a lot of projects you'll find on there, which is, you know, call your elderly neighbors and check in, call those most vulnerable, um, just ways that you can give your time um, to help be a part of the solution. I mean, this is our opportunity to shine, especially as Christians and leaders, um, to be leveraging our influence towards things of this nature where we really are making a tangible impact and a missional impact uh, right where we live. Yeah, it was really interesting as I was even watching this, you, you, you all have one of those. I've seen this on some of the other you know uh, websites where it has a little ticker and down at the bottom, you can just see when somebody signs up. And so even as we've been sitting here, I've seen four or five of these the little things come up showing somebody's just signed up to to be a volunteer in this area or that area, uh, which is is really exciting to see people actually in you know live signing up right now. Yeah, it's 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 been quite a ride. I mean, um, so two weeks ago we decided to open it up, make the strategic move to give it for free to everybody is just the right thing to do right now. And then secondly, you know, we worked nonstop for seemed like 24 hours a day for seven days to open up the platform and move it from a product to this open thing that anybody can come to. But then, yeah, the response has been huge. And this is a strategic thing that I'm seeing that may be helpful for your audience is typically we operate in siloed walled gardens. And we, we do this a lot in our churches. We do this a lot in, from nonprofits where these are our needs. These are our things that we need locally. These are our people who are gonna go serve there. Um, and so when a crisis happens like this, the only way you can find out to help is by, you know, either have to know a nonprofit or go to a specific church or hear about it from somebody or word of mouth and, or do a lot of Google searching to find it. Um, but with this as an open digital platform, we're able to have all of these organizations in a community come on together. And it's essentially knocking down all of the fences of that walled garden. So now we truly have a, a response crisis portal that's allowing people um, to go to one place that's streamlined that is a clearinghouse of all of the needs that are happening right here in your local community and because of the beauty of the internet we know your ip address or your geolocation on our app up relevant ways to do and serve right there where you are and so um we're finding that this is you know the platform approach is something that is is significant and and really a multiplier for communities which i love seeing because now churches can read from the same playbook and they can respond together uh, in a community in unity and really you know that's what it's going to take for something like this is such a crisis that's so you know we've never never seen in this lifetime before um and and we've got to be able to do things differently than we've done in the past um, Fred Ader, who's one of our Texas Baptists down in the South area, he asked the question, is this available in South Texas? Absolutely. Yes. Go to beaneighborcampaign.com. You can sign up right there as an organization or an individual. It's, we operate in 31 countries around the world. I mean, it is, it's global. Um, you can get it in any community. And if there are not projects in South Texas, you can begin to start posting them yourself as a church or a vetted organization. Um, and we also have any time and virtual ones that literally have coverage anywhere in the world that anybody can do. And tell, tell them a little bit about the app as well. That that was really impressive to me because um, th th this is the blog that connects to the app. Um, to tell them about how they can get that, and and that may help help some connect who you know prefer to use their their cell phones. Yeah, and so you know, in this day and age, in this cultural moment the average person touches their phone 2,700 times a day, which is, wow. you know, finding that is what led me to, to Vomo as I'm not a technologist, but realizing that in this cultural moment where everyone's staring at a screen, we have to have ways to drive more engagement. And by making it more accessible, we drive more people to it. And so, you know, we meet people all the time where they love apps. Some people love them, some people hate them. So you can either go to the website or you can go to the Vomo app uh, that's in the Android store for Google or in the Apple iOS store. And uh, and that's a front door into this Be a Neighbor campaign as well. And so if you go to the app, 
Um, it'll literally have a little button that says join, be a neighbor, click that, log on, and it'll start serving up ways for you to go serve right there in your local community. Um, and so for any individual that wants to contribute and help right now, that's one of the, that's one of the call to actions that you can go do. And if you're an organization looking to receive help and receive organization or receive uh, help during this time, you can go to the be a neighbor and that's where you get the free account and be able to start utilizing this, this platform. Awesome. Uh, it seems to me, we were talking about this at, in, in our, in our staff meetings and things that, you know, after nine 11, you know, remember how everything changed. We, we immediately begin to talk about how things are never going to go back again. Just like with nine 11, things never went completely back the way they were before, you, you, you know, how that all happens when current crisis hits, I feel like that's going to be the same with this situation, that it's never going to go uh, back to the way things were before. And I, and I think that's probably a good thing when it comes to some uh, changes, especially with the involvement that, that the church needs to have on the front lines of ministry. And so this may force people out of their normal comfort zone that uh, have kind of uh, become used to the normal routine of church work. Uh, to to an opportunity now that they're actually getting involved with something, and, and I could see an app like this really helping to to make that happen. Yeah, I I th- I I think we have an incredible opportunity and a responsibility right now, and and to me, yes, this is a springboard of the church truly being the church outside the walls, and if if we can rise up now, and especially with us with our superpower of being indwelled by the Holy Spirit, right? We have the power of God in us and yes. we're out being mobilized and we can leverage technology and platforms like this. Uh, all that does is, I mean, it's not the, the silver bullet. It just streamlines everything and allows us to do this more effectively. And so, yeah, I think this is our moment, but then after, after this crisis, you know, Lord willing, when it's subsided, yeah, I think you're exactly right. I think we're going to be doing church differently. I think we're, you know, a lot of churches are realizing we're having to meet virtually. And so it's, it's causing major changes in the way we have historically done things. And I think we'll learn a lot right now um, that will put us on a completely different trajectory. And so, you know, I was, I went through a accelerator program called Praxis out of New York. Um, it's a redemptive entrepreneurship accelerator program. And Andy Crouch is one of the mentor spiritual advisors for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's been challenging us this whole time of, you know, how do we create culture amidst chaos in a time like this? Um, and, you know, as believers, we're to be out front helping to create that culture. And so, you know, how do we respond? How do we as church leaders um, move and have flexibility and respond to exactly what's happening out in our community? And I think the worst thing that could happen is, that we don't know what to do as church leaders. And so therefore we do nothing and we we're just hanging out. And, and I know that's not anybody's intention and that's not what we want. Nobody would want to say that. Um, but I I think it's time that we, we need, we're, we're being forced to take some risks here. Well, Rob, I just want to thank you for uh, taking the initiative with this and leading the way and helping people to connect with needs practically. Um, and not just talking about it, not just saying, uh, go and be well fed. I'll be praying for you, brother. You know, those kinds of things that oftentimes the, 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 the you know, responses that people get from the church, but instead saying, here's a practical way for us to connect the need with people who are willing to meet the need. There, there are people out there who are, I think are very well intending. They want to get involved. They just don't know how. Um, and this, this uh, platform helps that. There are other platforms and other things out there as far as uh, when you begin to search as far as uh, for needs, obviously, even at Texas Bank. Baptist on our website, you can go there. Um, uh, the motto of Texas Baptist is together you can do more. And that's true when it comes to responding to crisis. And you can see more information uh, for our Texas Baptist churches, um, Texas Baptist pastors. Some are, are losing income just like many others around the world are and are struggling because of financial need. Well, if you're a Texas Baptist church and you're a part of that, then c- come to the website there at texasbaptist.org and you can find more information about how we can uh, help you here at Texas Baptist as well. And so, um, Rob, again, thank you so much for your work with VOMO and thank you for for being a good neighbor, uh, quite literally, by reaching out and helping others. Thanks. Thanks, Leighton. I appreciate it.